This app and this app were both built without writing a single line of code themselves and they've already made millions. But this app right here was not built with AI and it cost over $20,000 and took weeks or even months to build. But now it makes over $40,000 a month and it was sold for more than $1.5 million. So in this video I'm trying to rebuild that same app in less than one hour using nothing but AI tools and for less than $20. And to go even further I'm adding a bonus AI feature the original app didn't even have. Now here's the plan. First we're going to identify a viral app idea, then I'll use my free brain upper tool to turn the idea into an optimized blueprint, and then we'll be using bolt.new to build the entire app with AI, then we're going to integrate Superbase for the database and the user signups, and then we're building out the bonus AI feature using DeepSeek's API, and then I will test out the entire app on my phone using Expo Go, and finally I will upgrade the app's design using Mobin. Step 1. Identify a viral app idea. Before we build anything, let me show you why this app idea actually works. It's called PuffCount and on the surface it's ridiculously simple. You tap a button every time you vape, it tracks how often you vape daily and it helps you quit. But here is the part that most people miss. This app solves a deep emotional problem. It's not a productivity tool like another habit tracker. It's helping people stop something they hate doing and feel proud while doing it. And that emotional pull is exactly why this app idea works. And because the app is so simple, it's very easy to market it. You can pitch the entire app in just three words. Quit vaping app. That is the kind of clarity that makes something go viral. And that's why this app makes over $40,000 a month and was acquired for more than a minimum of $1 million, but I think it was closer to $2 million. So now how do you find ideas like this one? Here is the simple three-part test that I myself use to spot viral app ideas. Number one, does it solve a painful or emotional problem? If the problem does not hurt, people don't care or won't pay to use it. There's no need for it. Number two, can you explain it? in three words or less. Simple ideas go viral. That's the rule. Your app needs to be understood within two seconds, especially if you're marketing on social media where people are doom scrolling and skipping anything that doesn't grab their attention instantly. If they need to stop the video and think, then you have already lost them. You want that instant, oh, I get it moment. The so-called aha moment. Just like plug AI, reply to girls, or Cal AI, photo calorie tracker. Number three, would users want to share it without being asked. If the app makes the users feel good, look smart or win in some way, they'll tell everyone about it and basically market the app for you. So if your idea hits all of these three points, you're not just building an app, you're building something people actually need. And that's what separates apps that fail from an app that makes $40,000 a month and gets acquired for $1.5 million. The hardest part of building an app is coming up with an idea that people actually want. So I made a free checklist that validates your app idea. I've added a link to it in the description if you want it. Step 2. Turn the idea into a a buildable plan. Alright, now that we have got the idea, here is our shortcut. I used to spend hours mapping out every little detail of my app in Notion, but once I started building the app, I'd end up ignoring half of it anyway. So I made a completely free tool called BrainNumper.ai, and it turns your app ideas into buildable project plans optimized for tools like Bolt.new. So head over to BrainNumper.ai and then let's choose Bolt.new. All I do is just to brain dump the the app idea with its core features, how it works, etc. An app that helps users quit vaping. And then I explain the main feature and how it works. And then I also include a quick high level explanation of what the app is meant to accomplish. Then hit submit and Brain Dumper will use about 30 to 60 seconds to generate an optimized prompt that we can copy directly into Bolt.nu. So once Brain Dumper finishes, click on copy context to grab the entire plan, then hit open Bolt bolt.new to get 200,000 free points with my referral, or you can just open bolt.new yourself manually if you do not want the free 200,000 points. Okay, so step 3 is to build the app. Now paste the entire context into bolt, but before hitting enter, just take a moment to double check the plan. Remove anything unnecessary, and make sure that every feature listed actually deserves to be in the MVP. Less is more. Remember that this is your MVP, your minimum viable product.
product. That means focusing on just the core feature your app needs to solve the main problem. One feature done extremely well. As I now review the plan, I remove things like usage pattern detection and predictive tracking. These are cool ideas, but it's too advanced for a first version. We want a simple but functional app. That's how you ship fast. Okay, so now everything looks good. Then let's click on generate. So now Bolt will build the entire app using React Native and Expo. So to explain this quickly, Expo makes it insanely easy to build apps for iOS, Android and for the web, all from the same codebase. That means that you build your app once and it works everywhere, instead of having to rebuild it multiple times for different platforms. And you don't even need a Mac to build apps for iOS anymore, because Expo simply lets you deploy to App Store and Google Play Store through the cloud. Expo is what most people, including me, use now to build apps, and I've already been using it for more than one year. And I just want to make a quick shout out to today's sponsors, Bolt, Expo and Mobin. And by the way, this video wasn't made for the sponsorship. I planned the video first and I only reached out to brands I already use myself. This way I get to stay completely honest with the sponsorships. So now the app has finished generating, so let's see what we got. Okay, so it has built four screens. The home page, this is the main screen with a big log puff button. So every time you vape, you tap this button and below it, there's a 24 hour timeline showing your usage pattern throughout the day. And then we have the timeline. This page gives a more detailed view of your habits. It includes things like your peak usage hour, your average hits per hour and other useful trends. On the statistics page, here we get your lifetime statistics. How many puffs you've taken, how much money you've saved so far, your longest streak without vaping and etc. And finally, we have the settings page, and this is just a page for managing your personal details and device info. That's a solid base, all from just one prompt. And Bolt actually added a bit more than what we need, so let's clean it up. On the statistics page, I don't want the tips for success or recent achievements. They're unnecessary for the MVP. And on the settings page, we don't need the help and frequently asked questions button or the clear all data button either. So I'll just prompt Bolt to remove those sections and hit enter and let it update the app. Once it's done, let's have a look. All right, okay, this looks way cleaner. This is exactly what we want for a simple app. Now back on the settings page, I noticed that two options were not working. Device configuration and goals and targets. So let's prompt this. We are not able to click on either device configuration or goals and targets. Set this up. So now just wait for Bolt to finish generating. Okay, so we hit a small error, but no worries. Click attempt fix and wait for it to finish. A minute later, the issue was fixed and something cool actually happened. Bolt has now created a full onboarding flow for us. Okay, let's see. It asks me which vape device I use, the nicotine strength, and how much each puff costs. This could probably be calculated in a better way now that I think about it, but this works. Then let's click get started. And now if we click the button, we can see that it logs each puff with the settings we just inputted from the onboarding. On the goals and targets page, remove, set your quit journey, and let's do reduction target percent. And then hit enter. When it's done, let's go back to the settings page and yeah, this looks good. Okay, so it looks like the clear all data button snuck back into the settings page. Maybe I should just keep it then? Hmm? No, I just prompt Bolt to remove it again. And a few seconds later, it's gone. Step four, let's now add a real backend to this app so users can create accounts, stay logged in and save their data. We'll use Superbase for this. In Bolt, head to the top right corner, click on integrations and choose Superbase. Click create new project, name it and choose a database password. You'll then get redirected to Superbase's site. If this is your first time, it will ask you to create an organization I'll just call mine build with AI content. Once that's done, hit authorize Bolt and you should see Superbase successfully connected. Now back in Bolt, prompt this. I've created a project and connected Superbase. Then Bolt will go ahead and set up all the backend stuff for us. The database tables, the user authentication and all that. And then it will prompt you to apply Superbase migration, accept that. If there's an error, just click attempt fix and let Bolt clean it up. Okay, so when it's done, now it's time to test it. Sign up with any email to test it. 
And just like that, we have created an account. There was a small auth issue, so I'll click attempt fix again to fix the problem. And while Bolt is fixing it, let's head over to Superbase, open the dashboard, and check the authentication tab. Nice, so the account I just made is right there. So now we know it's working. Back in Bolt, I'll let it finish fixing the auth issue. And when it's done, let's also test if the data is getting saved to the database. I'll just spam click the log puff button like 20 times. Then I'll go back to Superbase, Table Editor, and I'll open the Puff Records table. And as we can see, all the 20 records are there. Perfect. And keep in mind that this is real data, stored in a real backend, tied to a real user. This used to take me hours to set up before when I worked at my software engineer job, but we just set it up in two minutes. That's crazy. Step 5, the bonus AI feature. Alright, now that we have a fully working PuffCount clone with user authentication and a real backend setup, let's take it one step further. We're going to add a bonus AI feature, something the original Puff count don't even have. So head over to platform.deepseek.com and sign up if you haven't already. In the left sidebar, click on API keys, then hit create new API key. I'll name mine Puff count v2. With this API key, we can now send text to DeepSeek's AI straight from our app. So just copy it, and now let's go back to Bolt and prompt this. Now let's spill out the AI feature of the app. It should be a simple way to chat with the database by using DeepSeek's API. It will let you ask any question, and the AI will check the database and give an answer. Then hit enter and let Bolt do its thing. Okay, so now it's done, and we have three steps to do. Step number one is to get the DeepSeek API key, and we just did this. Step number two is to add the API key to the the env file so open the code and then open the env file add a new line and type deepseek api key equals and then paste in your api key and then remember to save the file and step number three is to then open app.json under the web and output field bolt wants us to update something but it's not super clear on what we need to do so just switch to chat mode and ask this what is meant with point number three okay so now it only explains it without mentioning what we need to do so i'll ask again right now it's set to single should i change it and now it tells us that we just need to clear the string so it's empty so i'll remove it and save the file perfect now just refresh the app with the icon in the top left in bolt we need to refresh the app when we update the env file so let's head over to the new page ai chat Hi, I'm your assistant. I can help you analyze your vaping data and answer questions about your usage patterns. Try asking me how many times have I vaped today. Okay, let's test it out. Nice, that works perfectly. That's crazy, we just added an AI assistant to the app and it only took one prompt. Step number six, test the app on your phone. Now comes the fun part. Let's test the app on a real phone. Click the device preview button in Bolt and this will show a QR code. Now on our phone, if you haven't already, download the Expo Go app from either App Store or Google Play Store. When you have it installed, open the camera app on your phone and scan the QR code on your PC. Then open the link and Expo Go will launch the app. Now just wait for it to finish loading and nice. I'll create a new account to see if it's working on my phone. And yes, it works exactly the same as on PC. I'll just go through the onboarding flow first, and then let's test the log puff button. Okay, that works perfectly. And all the other pages are working as well. You can literally submit this app to the App Store already. <laughs> and the final step, let's upgrade the UI. Okay, so now the entire app works, but let's be honest, the UI is kind of boring. If you want your users to take your app seriously, it needs to look premium. So now it's time to upgrade the UI of the app. Let's head over to mobbin.com. So Mobbin is a huge design library that lets you explore screenshots of all the screens from real and big apps that have invested millions of dollars into their design. And this is what most professional app builders use to get inspiration from the biggest apps out there. And I've actually managed to convince Mobbin to give you guys 20% off Mobbin Pro. Literally no one else is offering that discount right now. The link is in the description if you want to give it a try. So in Mobbin, I'll filter by most popular and the platform iOS. Here we can see screenshots of basically unlimited apps. And these are all well-known apps like Coinbase, Airbnb, Spotify, Uber and way way more. 
but I must say that I like Duolingo's design the best out of all of these. By now everyone knows that Duolingo is the best mobile app when it comes to UI and UX design, so I'll use it as inspiration for my app. What I'll do now is to mark all the pages that I like the most, and then you can either send all the marked designs over to a Figma file, or you can just click on save and create a collection. I like to do this to save all of my favorite screenshots in one place. I just call the collection PuffCount V2. If we now scroll up and navigate over to the saved page, here we can see the collection we just made. So let's open this and here I'll copy all the screenshots I want to use and paste them in Bolt one by one. And as we can see here, Bolt only allows up to five screenshots at a time. So let's just go with these five then. And now I'll prompt this. Use these images of Duolingo's app screens as inspiration for our UI design. We want it to be just as professional and simplistic. Okay, now I'm actually very excited to see how this will look like. Wow, okay, this looks extremely good. I'll open the device preview again to see how this looks like on the phone. So just scan the QR code in the camera app again on your phone open the link and wait for the app to bundle. Now let me log into my account again and the onboarding flow looks so much cleaner now. Wow, the homepage looks awesome. This definitely feels way more premium. It's so satisfying to click the button. And the other pages all looks good as well. Perfect! The full step-by-step -step blog version of this video is linked below in the description and remember to grab the free app validation checklist whilst you're there. And if you want to learn the exact strategy that Kale AI used to go from zero to two million dollars in monthly recurring revenue as high schoolers, then I recommend checking out this video right here. It's the most valuable video I've made so far.